Hello, this is, I'm sorry, let me, Paul start, let me start over. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, September 4th, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. I am the Wombat! Yay! And our guest today are the is the john richards from england welcome i can't compete with the wombat i mean no, can, nobody, john nobody can himself <laughs> digital free thought radio hour is a talk radio show about atheism free thought rational thought humanism and the sciences and conversely we'll also talk about religion religious faith gods holy books and superstition and if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in your town well you're just not here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us, the Atheist Society of Knoxville, ASK. And we'll tell you more about that after the mid-show break. Wombat, what's our topic today? Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me, all the good things that, and I forgot all the lyrics, but it's going <laughs> to be an uh, interesting show today. Uh, cool. Before we get into it, I have a it would be nice to catch up on everybody, see how they've been doing. Larry. How you been? What's going on with you? Oh, I've been fine. I uh, didn't ride my motorcycle yet uh, this weekend, but I made this afternoon. Um, just playing games and, and working. Not bad. Staying, not bad. Not yeah, bad. Not bad. Okay, cool. Uh, pretty straightforward with me, too. Like I said, I got a lot of car stuff done. Uh, we got a lot of equipment fixed up at work. Uh, we're all set up for buying new scientific toys at our at our laboratories. And we're having vendors come in and be like, this is the latest and greatest piece of equipment. And there's so much cool gadgetry that exists in the world that you just have to like sit back and be like, how does it all work? What do we need? Uh, and what would be cool to have? And then how do we make the business case argument for it so our higher level managers can get it? But it's it's a fun time to be a scientist. There's a really there's always like some new some new technology that's out there that we need to capture. Yeah. Uh, John you, Richards, you how you been? Want... Oh, go ahead. Go on, you want ideas for new technology? Watch the hacks videos. <laughs> the hacks videos. What is this? You know, life life hacks. Ah, uh, life hacks videos. Yeah, yeah. some string and, and then a, make a, a teacup. Yeah, and yeah, make, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. make a product after it. Okay, uh, John Richards, what's going on with you, my friend? <coughs> Everything's fine here. Thank you. I um, we had a, a very good free thought hour last night. Nice. With um, the return visit of Pastor Alan Cartwright. Right. Who, the the he, arguments. He, yes, that's right. Yeah. He, he came on with his PowerPoint presentation to convince us that Christianity was the thing. And he allowed us to challenge him. So that was fun. Okay, cool. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. I, I imagine it was not supposed to be good because he was asking for more punishment, right? Like he needed clickbait so he can say, look at all these angry atheists holding me back you, well you have to watch it a pleasant time okay 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 where can it's we up, watch yeah. that again just so the audience doesn't have to wait free thought channel it's, nice. it's in the live section of videos oh cool cool uh and as we get started i know eric just or bujo just showed up bujo it's always oh, cool. good to hear from you as you get yourself set up we'll we'll get into uh intro for you and let me stall three more seconds. Okay, he's here. Hey, Boudreau, what's up? Good one, guys. Cool. Check. We're just starting up with a, a how's everyone been doing? Might as well check in with you. How you been doing, my friend? Uh, been okay. Been okay. Uh, just got done from Orange Theory at the gym, so I'm a little sweaty. So, Orange Apologies. Theory, your band, or Orange Theory, a gym now? What's going on it's, here? It's a gym. <laughs> Orange Whip was the band. Uh, Orange Theory. <laughs> <laughs> Orange Leaf is the ice cream. Orange okay. Whip's the band. Orange Theory. Oh, yeah, any of those could make you sweaty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> very, very cool. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about uh, uh, a comment that we got on our YouTube page by Cynical Precious. And it's a doozy of a comment, so I'm just going to go over it real quick in three phases. First phase. I follow a few Christian influencers, purely out of curiosity, this person's also an atheist, who make YouTube comments about topics and answer questions from their viewers. And I've noticed probably 90% of the questions they asked are all about sex, masturbation, and lust. It's all sex, 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 and some more sex. Some Christians like to call out sexual sins, 
that others are committing while turning a blind eye to other sins that they commit on the daily? What's the obsession with knowing about other people's sex lives? And why are there so many Christians so invested in purity? And then I thought these were the last two sections that are really important for me. Uh, from the push for virginity from a very young age to the obsession of the dreaded wedding night to adolescents being told to keep their lustful thoughts away, it almost feels as though they want to talk about sex in a nosy, morbidly curious type of way. It's like their own passion and curiosity is burning a hole in their chest. So they just got to talk about it. Let's talk about that then during the show. So a lot of topics here. Go on ahead, John Richards. We'll do first impressions and then we'll deep, deep dive into the uh, specifics of the comment itself. Yeah, John Richards. Well, you, you quoted the word, you used the word nosy from the uh, the quote in, in the, the, the text that the, the viewer sent in or the listeners sent in. Yeah. And, and I'd like to reinforce that because my attitude is that these people like to stick their noses in other people's genitalia. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, any other general thoughts before we do a deep dive, Eric? Do you have ideas of like the the uh, the concept of sex obsession with Christians, even as a taboo subject? Yeah, uh, I've always felt it kind of goes contrary to human biology. It's mm. it's an odd thing to. Yeah, uh, I, I think obviously there's some uh, some need to have people not masturbate. You know when <laughs> when uh, you know. Uh, <clears throat> They're, they're younger and in older times it made sense you know you didn't want to waste the seed so to speak but uh, waste the seed yeah 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 <laughs> now now it's so limited <laughs> right right we, just, we want know. all of our followers to have incredibly high blood pressure and like right. be very right. awkward around the opposite sex it's very bizarre yeah larry go on ahead way on all right let's talk about that uh the sin of onan is what they talk about when they're talking mm. about masturbation okay but it wasn't about masturbation it was about obedience to God. In other words, God wanted him to marry his, his brother's sister after the, his brother died and have children by her. Well, he, he, he did not, quote, finish inside her and he um, finished himself, basically. Yeah. But that was, be and God punished him, punished him, but it was because he didn't obey God, not that he, uh, you know, did the masturbation thing. So it's, Wait a second, it's so are you saying Christmas misconstrued something? They huh? misconstrue something even from yeah. their, their well, own textbook. Yeah. That never happened. Because it seems like sex is the one thing that Christians forbid, and without any biblical reason, they have to manufacture reasons for it. Mm. John Richards, get in here. I think I know the reason for that. It's because masturbation, masturbation makes you deaf. So, of course, he couldn't hear what God was saying. Okay, so this is, this is a or new blind. thing. blind. <laughs> I heard blind. I've not heard deaf. So is that how it is in Europe? Do they say it makes you deaf in Europe? Is that the? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, I did. My my general thoughts about this is, um, it's never really about the thing that's forbidden. It's always the subtext, and the subtext for me is always control. Right. I'm trying to do whatever I can to control you. And so I will give you these silly barriers to jump over. Don't wear fabric to two cloths. Don't wear purple. Don't eat shellfish on Sundays. Don't tie knots on this day of the week. Don't have sex mm -hmm. in this way. Don't have sex in that way. Don't touch yourself this way. And, you know, you won't ever get them all. You'll never you'll never be find a person who's, a, who's truly following every single rule in the Bible because there's so many articulated points that you have to follow. But it's not about hitting them all. It's about the willingness or the intention to do it because that gives me power as a person who's giving you the commands over you. And while you worry about following all the rules, I'm watching you make sure you mm. follow all the rules and taking 10% yeah. of your paycheck at the end of the day. Yeah. John Richards. Does does one sin cancel out another? I mean, would it be all right to masturbate while wearing mixed fabric? <laughs> <laughs> Only if you film it, I guess you'd be a problem there. <laughs> there, there, there. <laughs> So, yeah, I think it's a best issue of control. And, and if you look back at like Mesopotamia, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of other stuff to do aside from her cheap. <laughs> the masturbate. So like what else? What are we really, you know, docking these people for? So uh, let's get into the nature of the question. What's the obsession with knowing about other people's sex lives and why are Christians so invested in purity? I find that to be a particularly useful point. Eric. Why are Christians invested in other people's sex lives? Why is purity such a big deal? 
is it is it because it's awkward to talk about is it i mean the different societies actually you know obviously treat it differently but mm. um and and obviously it's changed quite a bit over the years uh you know some countries um amsterdam obviously is a little more um open with with sexuality and, and that's obviously grown i realize i've said obviously like four times now but that's changed kind of quite a bit over time it, okay is does it have something to do with uh gluttony uh, like the Ooh. the uh, is is there some like you you you're not supposed to you know eat all the sweets and and stuff yourself all the time so you're supposed to kind of um limit the, the amount of good things you're doing so as part of it maybe um you know it feels good you know but you know don't do it that much because it feels so good it's a it's it's one of the sins right right i don't know maybe 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 it ties somehow into that is it you're supposed to be um uh, limiting in in how often you have sex or masturbate or whatever i mean i wonder if that's part of it i don't, I don't help know. me out so like non-protestant point of view you have catholic upbringing and i'm wondering yeah. like the old school catholic appreciation of life here on earth is this is a testing ground to determine where you're going to go afterwards so like the pleasures you get here the pleasures for your body are nothing compared to the pleasures you can have if you get them from god and therefore, any any way you are feeling good or resolving any sort of pleasure for yourself bodily wise, that's that's so substandard and 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 the root of the devil trying to you know yeah. pull you away from the true pleasure, which is being one with God's word and his teachings and stuff like that. Is that does that sound familiar or am I am I close to a basis on that? I didn't pay a whole lot of attention in the in church, honestly. So uh, <laughs> I just um, know it is a more hardcore version than Protestantism. That's all. Uh, yeah, but, but... I, obviously the Catholics have a whole issue with with birth control and, and things, which is yeah. a whole other piece. But um, the, the one thing that comes to mind in, in 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 what you're saying, you know, orgasm is fantastic. But talk to the guy who has an orgasm like every thirty seconds, every hour. Um, I think there's actually a real person, a medical condition, had a medical con condition and it's miserable for that guy. So wow, if, if, if we're going to say, you know, heaven or the eternity or the afterlife is just more of, of the, the, the wonderful things like, like an orgasm here, then you're probably in for a little bit of hell then I would think. Yeah, that could <laughs> that be, would be, that could be, could be bad. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it, all interesting points. We're going to go up to Larry. Listen why do people care or why do christians care so much about purity virginity why is that such a big deal i don't know maybe it uh it comes back to uh suffering is is godlike uh, the mm, more you suffer the more the closer you are to jesus don't mm. do anything for pleasure uh because it would lessen the suffering that you're you're uh, go, supposed to go through during this life i don't know but right. uh, that's my guess like you give us a body that gets hungry and you tell us don't eat you give us a body that gets yeah. horny and you tell us don't masturbate or have sex. You give us a body that, you know, mm -hmm. gets thirsty. And you're like, don't drink, don't drink these things, drink yeah. these things. And you're just like, mm -hmm. you're just making me suffer. And it's like, that's the point though. Cause Jesus did that for you. It's like, I didn't ask him to. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that guy, Jesus, he, he's very demanding, isn't he? I mean, mm -hmm. he, first of all, he, he, um, he wants you to love him mm. and he came to set, mother against daughter and father against son hmm. so that he can have all your love for himself he's honestly what's going on there he, he, he sounds like a cult leader yes exactly mm -hmm. he can't take competition that's for sure not even distraction as a competition i mean if you're pleasuring yourself that's bad too because it's right. not him he right. wants it you know, I also find the concept of virginity and the way how we use it, at least in Western culture, I won't, I won't throw this out to Europe, but like, it's a very toxic label that we, we give both to girls and men, because for, for men, we use it as a, a form of conquest. We, we, we define men based on their sexual exploits uh, uh, in a large part, and it's shamed if they aren't a virgin. Flip side, we, we take women and we put them on a pedestal if they are a virgin, and we shame them if they aren't. And it's like, oh. but, and then also on the other flip side, if a guy wants to have sex with another guy, like if they game the system, we shame that as well. And it's just like, yeah. well, how, yeah. 
if sex is happening, someone's losing and someone's moving down on the pedestal and someone's moving up yes, in yes. every instance. And yes. you, you set up a whole racket where that's the case. Where every single time sex is happening, someone's going up and someone's going down, regardless of yeah. how it happens. I'm, okay. I'm sure there's been some polls done on this because I, I'm sure I've read somewhere that if you interview men and ask them how many sexual partners they've had, mm. it's always, you know, in double figures or more. Mm. And if you interview women from the same population, they've only had one. <laughs> so there's a mismatch. Somebody's not having it with somebody. I don't know right. what's going on. Absolutely. Uh, Eric, what's up? I, I, I think we left out one more group there when you kind of went through everyone's losing. I uh, left out a lot of groups. Well, well, well if, it, it, if it's it, both it. women, I think everyone's winning. And I think everyone agrees. If it's two women, it's oh, it's lovely. So, so elephant in the room, I got an asexuality flag here too. There's also another step where it's just like, hey, if you don't feel sexual attraction, people will look at that as if there's something wrong with you. And like the idea of like just not being sexually attracted to anybody is, is abnormal when like that is also a normal state. So you could also have a group where when a guy likes a man and a woman who are bisexual, and you can also have the other Punnett square box where it's just not sexually attracted to anything else. I'd certainly love food and disc golf. That's great too. And music and all that stuff. There's so much more cooler stuff than sex for me. But admitting that even in a public space seems abnormal, but it's also abnormal for me to have this outlook and then look outside and see two things. One, a completely sex obsessed society where I can't even look at a Burger King commercial without it being on like a red carpet with like rose petals falling on top of it or like a girl in a bikini like driving a Buick truck, like on, on, in, in the middle of a desert. And I'm like, what is, what is being sold to me here? This is very bizarre. But also on the flip side, this very, you know, um, conservative stance on sex hosted by the most, you know, uh, ubiquitous religious group that says sex is not something that you should use in a bad way or, or make uh, a, a, a scene about. Yet it's sold to us every single time I'm looking at like a Jesus on a cross with like the cut six packs pics. Like he's got like abs, he's got long flowing hair and he's got blood nowhere on his face. But like, it's got to be like, you know, it's got to look pretty. You can't make him look ugly. Come on. He's got to be cleanly shaped. I'm like, what, what I, I'm not saying, um, I'm not saying the message is consistent. I'm just saying like, it could be if you just guys all got in a room and decided like sex is a good thing. We're going to use it or sex is a bad thing. We're not going to use it, but don't use it and then also say it's bad at the same time too because it just seems to make this very weird yeah. juxtaposition of ideals yeah. it's, i wonder if there's it, any marketing men who are also christians because it doesn't go together does it mm, no it doesn't and like mother mary's like the big thing what about her not the fact that she gave birth to an interdimensional super high powerful being you know that created the universe it's the fact that she's a virgin that's the number one thing everyone says yeah, about mary yeah, it's like yeah that's very bizarre that's a very bizarre thing it's like i gave birth to the 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 creator it's like yeah but you're also a virgin that's that's what's important about you uh from the i also feel like pushing for virginia at a really young age could lead to a lot of problems too in the same capacity as not teaching people or not properly educating person about evolution leads them to 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 have a lot of problems with science down the road since it's a pillar of biology not mm. teaching them about sex or how to have it safely leads to the problem of like unplanned pregnancies, bad parents, um, yeah. uh, children that don't understand or get along with their parents because they're not talking the same language. They don't express themselves in the same way. One's going through puberty. The other one's far, far past it, maybe going into uh, <laughs> differing levels of uh, what's the right word for it? non-sexual activity so it's just like get over it. it's fine it's like no mom this is the literally the only thing i can think about what do you guys think about the push for virginity at a really young age by christians john richards i'll throw it out to you first well, well it's not just christians is it i mean mm. <clears throat> we have some muslims in our country now and they're in many ways they're even more extreme because when you get to be eight as a mm. as a girl you have to wear your hijab you know just the the, the scarf right yeah because, because they're fearful for some reason weird reason that the sight of female hair could drive men into a sexual frenzy right i don't know what's going on in, in their minds but uh, and so th they 
keep everybody apart from then on. But of course, so sex is a big taboo until you're married. And, and up until then, of course, you, as a woman in, in fundamentalist Islamic cultures, you have to go about in a tent with a man beside you, if you're allowed out at all. Yeah. And then once you are married, you're pretty much not allowed out anymore. Yeah. Yet, when you get to your afterlife, what happens? You get 42 virgins. Mm. Actually, actually, I think it's raisins. I think it was a yeah. mistranslation. No, seriously, I think it was a mistranslation. <laughs> <between raisins. laughs> yes, I've heard that. Yeah. Yes. It's only the boys who get 42 virgins, raisins. Anyway, it's not the girls. Eric, get- push. Yeah, push for Virginia at a young age, or what are the thoughts? Yeah, about? yeah. So I, I, I think talking about Islam is a, probably a whole, whole other, another piece we could get into. But, but sticking mm-hmm. with kind of Western civilization, uh, I think it's a, it's, it's so clearly to me kind of a backfiring uh, effect. It's at least it's certainly more recently. I mean, you think about Footloose when they were trying to ban dancing. Right. You know, it's it just it, it's you. You can't ban dancing. <clears throat> Look at them all. They're great. I mean, I mean, you 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 make this taboo. You you make it something you can't talk about. Right. Uh, I mean, it, it just it enters into yeah, early pregnancies, uh, sexually transmitted diseases, uh, just just a an unhealthy relationship with sex yeah. because you you're hiding it. You're you're yeah yeah. Well, punishment is a form of control. I mean, if if uh you're going along and you break some rule and you're supposed to be punished for it, then that gives more power to the person who is theoretically controlling the group. So the more rules you have to break and uh, the ones that oppose the most human desires and and, um, urges, you know, the more likely that they will break the rules and punishment will, will ensue. Mm. I also find that it, it it pieces of the default or what is the presupposed default. So if someone says, don't talk about atheism when you go outside, you're going to eventually assume that everyone's Christian just by the virtue of the yeah. fact that mm-hmm. everyone's got God. As and that's so one-sided. Points. Yep. Mm-hmm. They got Christian crosses they wear proudly. There's Christian radio stations. There's it's on some license tags on the framing. Like it's everywhere. You can't go outside at least once, particularly where we live, you know, Kentucky and Tennessee without right. seeing christian iconography or reminders that there are christians around you everywhere from dollar general to to on the license plate yeah it's on everything it's in our government Mm -hmm. buildings it's everywhere Mm -hmm. but when they say don't talk about atheism because it's a taboo subject then you begin to assume that everyone who's quiet even the people on this show could be christian and you have to like tippy toe around it i think in Mm -hmm. the same sense when they say hey don't talk about virginity don't talk about sex then the attitude becomes well then i imagine that everyone's straight and that everyone I meet is a guy who is sexually attracted to women, and every woman is this uh, demure, non-sexualized person who can't wait to have babies with me once they get married, right? Or that gay people don't exist, or that asexuals don't exist, or that bisexuals don't exist, or that transgenders aren't things that we have to talk about. And like all this benefits the default idea of what does it mean to be a man? And it's the Christian idea of what it means to be a man. And what does it mean to be a woman? And it's the Christian preset because they can be so much more open about their expression when they tell everyone else not to express it. I feel like that's the a discordance. What do you think, John Richards? Well, well what you've just described is peculiarly American mm. because you, you said there's Christian radio stations, there's Christian TV stations. Well, over here, you know, we have... Muslim radio stations. Whoa, and okay. Muslim TV stations, and I've been on them. Oh, really? <laughs> I can I can play you some clips of me on um, Islamic radio and television. Islamic wow. radio. Okay, that's a new one for me. Yeah, that'd be hard to fly in Tennessee and Kentucky, but I think yeah. it would be so, good to like. So over there, Christian up. is Christianity is kind of silent, but Muslim is loud. Uh, it used to be. I mean, you could be. When I was young, there was only the Anglican church and a few very small denominations that were in peculiarly local areas and Judaism. But of course, since then, we've had immigrants bring their religion to us. And so we've got Muslim communities, Hindu communities and pretty much everything else, even Baha'i in uh, in Manchester and around Manchester area. So Mm. we're we're very cosmopolitan and, and it's better 
because what was happening was the the Anglican Church, the established church, was moribund. You didn't really have to believe in God to belong to it. You just went along for the tea and cakes and chatted, mm. you know, and it opened itself to invasion by all these alternatives who are much more um, evangelizing, much yeah, more yeah. missionaries. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Guys, I, there's a lot more topics in this comment that I'd like to go to, but let's do it in the second half of the show. How about that? Sure. sure. Larry, mind taking uh, this? Stay tuned for the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, for just a moment. We were founded in 2002. It's been 20 years now. We have over 1,000 members, and we have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Taproom and P Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high-top tables, or if it's pretty weather outside, on the deck. Uh, we also have Tuesday evening Zoom meetings uh, for those who can't get out or don't live in Knoxville. You can join us. Uh, we'll send you the link if you email us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or letschatse at gmail.com. You can also find Ask on Facebook, meetup.com or knoxvilleatheist.org, which is their website. Or you can just Google Knoxville Atheist and you'll find us. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you can still go to a meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. That's right. Well, back. Where do we want to pick up? Hey, we're talking about this comment that we got from Cynical Precious regarding why Christians are so obsessed with sex. Uh, some feedback comments that we got on this inside the YouTube channel is from Geo Fagus. It's not just Christians and it's not just sex. Religions tend to go after our most basic urges and needs, look at religious rules on clothing, food, and other interactions with other people, you name it. Control those things, and you control those people. And I think that's probably the, the, the meat and potatoes behind it. One last comment that was on there is, it's also to control the women. Uh, control the women is a huge driving force of this. And if you control women, that's half of your population, you know? And and it's and I think this, it's... I think it's a meted sexual sexual repression because it's the thing that we probably think the most about, or at least as a as a, a, a species have the most wiring to go towards because we're all the products of sex, right? And so like it's gonna be a part of our lives at some point. And then it's the question of like how are we gonna interact with it when it does happen, right? And so if we are designed or trained ourselves to repress these thoughts, it only builds up more uh builds up more pressure when we can't just address it and recognize it for what it is and move on with our lives or mm. take part in it. It's It becomes like this extra monkey on our shoulder that weighs us down and makes us more reverent yeah. or at least acknowledgeable. Like, oh, if this weight on my shoulder isn't my sexual oppression, but in fact, Satan, then Satan's real because I feel this pressure all the time. And I feel like that's a really bad misconstruing of, mm -hmm. of feelings to hijack, you know? Um, it's an unfortunate thing, and I wish Christianity and other religions wouldn't take part in it. And when I heard about Islam, it also breaks my heart too. But it's, I guess, it's the same thing happens in, uh, in even sex Buddhism because you don't really see a lot of Buddhist females put on a pedestal, really, right? So like, sex is a uh, controversial tactic by a lot of religious groups. John Richards, you have thoughts on that? Yeah, well, it's. If it wasn't a good thing, we wouldn't be here, as somebody said earlier, because mm. obviously we are here as a result of reproduction. So it's necessary. Right. And mm. if you look at it from an evolutionary point of view, in order to succeed, all animals that you know have sexes, but you know, right. not those who are asexual, but all animals that have sexes have to reproduce. So denying right. it or making it a taboo is just ridiculous. And if you take some of our closest relatives, the bonobos, for example, you know, the smaller... Oh, no. Yeah, the, the smaller uh, chimpanzees, they they use sex 
all, almost like a handshake. They meet each other and <laughs> have a quick touch. And that's our closest primate relative? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Sounds about right. <laughs> uh, I'm going to throw this one out too. Uh, Eric, you, you are really big into design and engineering. And John Richards, you're also into biology. I'm a biochemist myself. I want to throw this out. Like if God wanted us to only have sex in the way that he approved to have, we could have just simply licked our fingers and touched them at the tips and like mm -hmm. transferred all of our genetic information. And that would have been it. But yeah. yet he made it where you could have 14 different positions that he doesn't approve of, maybe even way more than that. And it's like, I call this the missionary style for a reason. It's like, yeah, but there's way more other right. fun ways to do it. And he's like, the main taboo that he has is like gay sex, where it's like, or male, male gay sex. But it's like, you made a round peg in a round hole, right? Mm -hmm. Like you could have, <laughs> could have like really fixed that. It's like, oh, dang it. I did that thing where I made it. Oh, geez. Okay. We'll still yeah. don't do it anyway. It's like, you could have, you could have fixed that. You could have been a giant knot at the end. Front of like he was all knowing and didn't know it. <laughs> right, 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 right. But he's right. testing them. He's testing mm -hmm. them, guys. But he doesn't know the uh, results of the test. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. exactly. So you're going to mix blue dye and red dye together and get angry when you get purple dye? Like, come on, dude. Yeah. What are you doing? Eric, what do you think about the design aspect of that or other thoughts? Yeah, well, first of all, as a civil engineer, uh, mm. I wouldn't have put the sanitation system right next to the pleasure system. I mean, that's oh. just a dumb idea. Uh, I mean, the playground. But, uh, uh, I will say that, that uh, the other thing that kind of you know, the biology seems to uh, segregate between men and women is men can have multiple orgasms in in uh you know uh, uh in an easier way than um women women can you know the, the way they've the way the body's designed it's harder for a lot of women to have an orgasm which is which is a poor design it should you know it should be uh, you would think it would be a one in one it would just be um just as easy for both now of course that's that's not all women but i think you see that in, in other uh in other animals too and it's mm. Um, right. Obviously, it's just a byproduct of evolution. But um, uh, you know, uh, if 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 both genders were were designed the same way, you you would think it would be a easier easier way to have both achieve that. I don't. Yeah, and it's not as if it's not possible either, is it? Because right. yeah, uh, if if you look at mammals, some mammals use the same passageway to breathe and swallow through. You know, we, we have a, a nose and a like mouth. Us. Comes yeah. together, exactly. Comes together in a crossroad and, and goes into two pipes and sometimes goes the wrong way and chokes and that can lead to death. But it's not impossible to design it better. Look at the cetaceans. They have their breathing hole on the back of their neck and their mm. mouth only yeah. deals and with porpoises food. and whales and that type of thing. Exactly. Yes. Mm. Right, right, Dolphins, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So... You could say that putting the the reproductive aperture next to the urinary and defecation apertures is unintelligent design. Right. <laughs> Basically, there are ways you could have designed bodies if we were a product of design at all, yes, where sir. all these things that we consider sin or were told are sins would never have been a possibility or feasible yeah. in the first place. Yes. So to make it both feasible practical and pleasurable and fun all at the same time for a lot of different people and then say but don't do that is right. is is the mm. same condition of putting a a trap in the garden of Eden. like you put a you put mm. a you put an apple that's delicious that thing that looks like the thing that people need to eat that's in hand reach of a people who can reach and reach for it but told us not to reach for it and eat it and we didn't eat it and you put an animal that can speak our language and told us hey you should eat that thing we did it anyway because you purposely told us not to know what right and wrong is so we listen to this animal like that is by design like the worst trap you could have ever possibly set yeah. up and one of the most convoluted steps possible i mean talking animals what's going on just like mm -hmm. just put the piece of fruit in our mouths already yeah and it's, it's, <laughs> even, it's even worse that uh he he used that excuse to curse the rest of mankind oh it's just the, the people who did it yeah it's like he set up a game of mouse trap it's just like you're, mm. you're literally setting this up for, for failure it's like yeah but that's the point by the way and and again the, he knew that he knew the outcome he knew it was going to happen right right mm -hmm. and, that made it a trap 
<sighs> but it's also frustrating when we see when we talk with these Christians. I don't know if you brought this up with your Christian friend um, on Free Thought Hour, John, but like there are people who, despite knowing all these things, still ardently believe in the goodness of God yeah. and the design of God and the in yeah. the immaculate design of the universe by God. And it's yeah. like, but on the on the face level, you look at all the basic things that are if you take it, if you take it absolutely 100 percent true and you just look at what's dear and just have a small degree of criticism to it, none of this holds together. Yeah. Mm. It's like a Nicolas Cage movie. <laughs> no, it's, more movie. it's like I know it's br- I know there are a lot of explosions and it looks cool and Batman did that voice, but none of this makes sense if you just look at line yeah, for yeah. line. This makes no sense. All right. Interestingly, mm. in the, the chat free thought hour that we had last night, Alan, the pastor, said mm. he was brought up by his parents who were very religious and they've did they banned him from watching certain comedy shows on TV because they were a bit disrespectful of religion but he claims that they brought him up to think critically oh. so so what he's done is he's applied his critical thinking to his faith and reasoned his way through the bible but it he didn't apply it astutely enough or rigorously enough for it to for it to, him to realize that the whole thing is bs we just got two new comments and i and and that's a good point john that's a really good point because I, it's the hypocrisy of it that also bothers me too, right? And so oh, it is disgusting. Anyway, Grand Penn also made a comment on the thread. Uh, he says, theism is embarrassed by the curse of merely being human. If pooping and if using the bathroom were voluntary acts, they'd have been deemed sinful as well. And right. yeah. And then also another comment from Rush MC1 uh honestly most people are honest or most people are obsessed with sex christians just come at it from a negative and self-hating angle yeah okay okay thank you for those comments guys feel free to leave more as we do the chats um you know we've got to be obsessed with sex otherwise we wouldn't be here well you know here's my thought here's my thought i i appreciate him saying most i there are people who aren't obsessed with sex and it's not a non, it's not an abnormal thing to not be obsessed with and well, i want to no, just I, make sure that's a point too but yeah yeah, yeah. fair enough I, I didn't mean it's compulsory what i meant is as a population <laughs> there you, know, you go I, yeah yeah it's it's been a successful way and and it's and even if you don't have an obsession with it, it doesn't mean that you can't do it or that you're or waiting for or going through a phase it just means like no nah, it's okay to not be obsessed with it it's okay to look at it in a positive light too and I feel like what Christianity does is give us a starting pack of cards that are so bad that it basically weighs our impression of sex moving forward. Um, what I really also feel bad about, too, is the idea that sex is something that men, or how to put it, because it's used to control women, women never really get to see it at the table in terms of actually enjoying it pleasurably. And we don't have a, obviously, there's no women on the show, but I do feel like there's no voice to a woman that enjoys sex uh, because a man can talk about it in, in a way where it's like a pleasurable experience. I had all these organs, it was great. But if a woman does it, the societal context is, well, if this is a person who is morally not astute and not good and there's problems with them. And I feel like that lack of gender equality is also really, really bad too. Um, if, I'd be why I'd be I'd be really happy to live in a society where we get rid of this, you know, patriarchal look at it. Yeah, yeah, it's a really bad double standard. Uh new count new comment, patriarchy on patriarchy. The one thing men can't control is giving birth. So they can't be certain they are the father. In the absence of paternity tests, shaming women into monogamy and abstinence before marriage is clearly the best solution. Uh yeah. that's that is that's the point that's another point too it's just like hey it's a good way to control women if we can't have birth control pills even though we have them now the other thing we can do is shame them into monogamy abstinence yeah. which we know doesn't work very well either so uh it's just a, it's just a really bad setup and, and um, that, what you've just cool. outlined there is really all about property men want to know who their offsprings are Mm. So that so that they can leave their property to them and there will be no dispute because they can say, you're my son, you get this. OK, OK. Yeah, it's all about it's all about property before property, before 
civilization, when we were hunter gatherers, it really didn't matter because there was nothing to inherit. Hmm. Hmm. Very true. But then we had the chastity belt that uh, yes helped. <laughs> You can, yeah. hear, you can see some of those in castles and museums around here, and they yeah. are horrific cast oh, iron jobs or wrought iron jobs. Yeah. yeah. But you've, you... you've made me, this conversation has made me, has reminded me of a, of a video that I've seen from an African Christian, because in Africa, it's a bit different. It's not sort of every sexual activity is taboo. It's specific ones. <laughs> so you you can you're allowed to do the what's it called the um the the vicar's position you know oh, no man, it's not called vicar is it, it what is it it's a, a priest the the man on mi top mi sure missionary Miss missionary Nancy. thank you yeah missionary position that's okay in africa you can do man on top but all the other positions right. are not allowed and it has to be <laughs> man on top yes yeah. <laughs> which right. which actually goes against the 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 the, the uh, woman has an advantage being on top for her orgasm and right <laughs> that's another side. Yeah. right that was the man right right. Yeah, yeah. right right it's the dominance yeah. thing and it's the man yeah, yeah. that's having sex it's the woman yeah. that's receiving it that's that's yeah. the precept behind it Larry, let's not let's not get into revealing our favorite positions okay none larry <laughs> what's your what's your thought on uh the flock uh idea no, I was just thinking uh, back when the, these rules were being made, and maybe even currently, uh, the preacher could consider the flock, the predatory preacher, if there you know, was one, yeah. uh, could consider their flock their their private hunting ground, sexual right. hunting ground, oh. and didn't want others in the group to have sex with their possible conquests. Mm -hmm. So that they they really tamped down on the no no sex area, so that you know, STDs and things like that wouldn't get polluted into the yeah. uh, pool that they were exploiting. You know. And that makes me think of a news item which I reported this week about a quiverful church in the state of New York where uh, the, the leaders, the church leaders, have abused lots of women. Right. And, and their attitude is they hand over their sexuality to the Lord. Wow. Uh, yeah. I wonder mm -hmm. if we were to do a random poll of preachers, how many had met their own wife or significant other in a similar church group, right? Or, or even in their own congregation. And like, that is a, that could be a startling statistic, honestly. Um, I'm going to put my Christian hat on guys. And I'm going to say, you guys have been ragging on Christianity and religion for a while, but you guys haven't offered any solutions. So that's, that isn't that typical of atheists. What would you do to make it any better? And how can you even demonstrate that that would be the case? I'll throw it out to Larry Rhodes. Larry, you've been ragging on Christianity. So what? What does atheism have? How can you make this better? How can you make appreciation of sex in any way better? At least we have a system. What do you think? Well, I mean, to, with today's um, birth control pill and uh, readily available abortion if you need it, and most countries around the world, uh, let me put that addition to it, um, and modern medicine, uh, there's really no reason why we shouldn't uh, have sex as often and wherever we want to. Now, there are precautions. You have to be adult about it. You have to take the precautions. Um, unwelcome pregnancies, uh, spread of STDs, that type of thing. But the act itself, there's no reason to, uh, to forbid it. Uh, it's very pleasurable. Uh, I may have this attitude because when I grew up, <laughs> I was born in the 50s when after penicillin was made and before AIDS hit, mm. uh, free sex was, uh, you know, 67 type of thing, 60s and 70s type of thing. And that may be the attitude that I have, but I still think there's really no reason to tamp down on it, especially for supernatural reasons. Um, it, it gives pleasure. It brings people closer. It, uh, it feels good, you know, whatever, you know, my thoughts. Okay. Eric, atheism has nothing on the board. Christianity at least yeah. has rules of law, society, multiple right. presidents, multiple world leaders. We're not on fire right now. We got a planet that's good. We got a lot of resources. That's Christianity's benefit. What is yeah. atheism brought to the table? And if you guys take away all these rules, the whole society falls apart. So why are right. you ragging on Christianity this whole time? 
And what do you have as an atheist for improving sexuality? Well, I think like, like we've said, uh, a lot of the reasons to make sex taboo has been taken care of. You know, we have uh, uh, birth control, better understanding of how diseases and uh, spread and, and uh, all of that. So we don't really need the taboo and we don't really need the, uh, oh, the big guys watching you don't, you mm-hmm. know. Don't put your hand in your pants. Um, So we we, Mm -hmm. we say this sex education, you know, in schools, kids are going to figure it. The internet is there. (laughs) Kids are going to figure it out. They know how to use the computer better than you do. Uh, They're going to find out everything they need to know. So, so give them good education in schools. Don't make it icky, make it just very, very open. Be like uh, Netherlands. And then, yeah, mandatory vasectomies for every boy. There you go. (laughs) There you go. Because it's reversible. It's reversible. <laughs> John Richards, how are you going to yeah. control the women? See, you oh. see what Christianity says? We've had this oh, come on. Come tight on. grip who, control on women. Who You're just going to give that up? Who can control women? I mean, <laughs> give me a break. We can Christians are doing a again. pretty <laughs> effective job on it. I wouldn't even say it's a good job, but I'd say it's a pretty effective. Go ahead, Larry. What are you going? Uh, I go to... Um... Richard Dawkins reply when a Muslim asked him, how do you control your women? He hmm. said, they're not my women. So ah. yeah, no, they can, they, they're autonomous. I like Thank what, you. I like what Eric said about the internet is there. Right. And of course, poll, uh, surveys have been done about the usage of the internet and guess which countries visit the most porn sites. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to assume it's flipped. I'm going to say the more conservative the country, the better, but North Korea doesn't have a internet really, I think, but <laughs> man, this is going to be rough. Uh, I'm going to draw out America just because it seems like it's, we got the most people. It's not America. Who is it? Who is it? Tell us. Middle East. Middle East? It's it's, it's wow. particularly the Islamic countries. Wow. Because wow, yeah, wow, wow, they, wow. they don't get to see it in the walking yeah. around the streets. Yeah, they're the most, yeah. well, they could be potentially the most repressed. Larry, what do you think? Exactly. They're deprived. Well, yeah. I, I just wanted to respond to your, what does atheism bring? Yeah. What does it offer? <laughs> uh, well, it brings uh, an existence without it. I have a meme here that I created and sent out. <clears throat> An existence without a celestial dictator uh, reading your mind 24-7 looking for sin. Sure. No more preachers running your life. No worries about an eternity in hell. You get to sleep in on Sundays. Ah. And you get a 10% pay raise, too, if you're Ooh, tithing. Nice. I can tell you, yep. for me, uh, so I grew up with the just the general impression of Like there's only gay people and straight people and there's nothing really else in between. And when I was before puberty, I was like, I was waiting for sexual awakening to, to kick on on me. And when it didn't, like when I was 14, I was like, maybe I'm just a late bloomer. It's not a problem. And like, by the time I was 20, it was still like, I'm not feeling any like very strong, like sexual emotions either way. All my stuff works (laughs) And and, and and, and pleasuring feels good, but like, there's no, other person attraction i'm wondering like what's going on do i just hate women like is this a thing that i got to think about because i know i'm not gay either like what's what are the opportunities here and so i've got myself on this weird internet tunnel where it's like are there any other people that are like me and i found some people who are like uh pickup artists who are like yeah i don't like women either i just like dating them and i'm like oh i guess that's I guess closer to what I'm at then. Cause like I, I can, I can definitely date women. And so I, I started on almost like this weird track where I was like dating almost all the people in our, in our science building once. Like I could look at almost every girl and be like, I've been on a date with her, 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 nothing yet. Let me try another person. Let me try another person. And I felt <laughs> bad about it. And I was just like, what in the world's going on? And so finally, like after a long search, I found out like, is it okay to just not feel any sexual attraction? And it's like, yeah, of course, that's a whole thing. I'm like, why didn't I find that? And this is like in my thirties. Like, why didn't I find that when I was in my teens? Why didn't someone educate me or let me know that? Cause at that yeah, point, I only knew- Cause you can't talk about that stuff. Exactly. I only knew straight, gay, or uh, bi. And I thought, well, you either like men, you like women, or you like both men and women. But I'm like, what if you don't like any of those? Is that, is that an option? Is there a fourth box? None, of, none of the above. It's like, yeah, you can be none. I was like, 
that's the group and not only is that a group but like it's a full thing it's like a full it's not just a community but it's just like its own standardized thing no one explained it to me and i felt like as eric was saying if we just had this taught in schools where it's just like kids you can be any of these things and it's a whole spectrum and it's okay and you don't have to worry about the repression or anything it would have saved me a lot of headache would have saved me a lot of guilt a lot of repression and just give me a better understanding or at least a good starter pack to figure out what my identity is just moving forward well, and i'm I was glad just you like, found out thanks and i just yeah. appreciate having that without the religion and i feel like if the religion got out of the way it would help a lot of other kids too we have a world where there's gay kids who commit suicide transgenders who uh do the same thing as too that in fact they're most at risk and i feel like if religion were to or this dogma or the 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 pressure we put on sexual identification or 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 freedom is just taken away we could really reduce you know unwanted teen pregnancy because we can find safe ways to do it we can improve birth control access for both men and women other than mandatory vasectomy sorry sorry Boudreau. Ooh. There's, there might be a pill out there that for men that can just stop sperm from flying around. We could have had that research like 20 years ago. And uh, just like the idea of like, here's what your identities are, a tolerance for it, acceptance of it, kids coming out to their parents and not being a big deal. All of this stuff could have been so much better, um, but we had to be in this reality. And so yeah. we are left here to clean up the mess that religion had wrought. And yeah. we, we need to start. John Richards. Yeah. One of the things that religion likes to do is keep people as ignorant as possible so that they can, can control their thoughts even. Mm. And I keep remember- them in a bubble. Yeah, that's mm. right. I remember that I, I bumped into a woman, I think it was on Twitter, who said that one of her male workmates had actually asked her how she urinates when she's got a tampon in. I mean, that's just, an indictment of the yeah. failure of the educational system. education yeah. of, of how reproduction systems work right i never yeah. thought i'd ever tell this story out loud but there was once a girl in my high school who was so angry at another guy that she drew him naked and like in this terrible tortured position but she everyone made fun of it because she put the balls on the top <laughs> instead of below we were just like oh my gosh that's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. That's so anyway. funny. All right. Yeah, it's sad too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sad. I blame the teachers. Mm. Right, right, right. We need well, education. I, I blame, teachers. you know, the 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 edict against talking about sex. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, if it weren't for that edict, we'd have mm. sex education. It'd be right. normal. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I was a teacher, so I can blame teachers. That i'm allowed to <laughs> so we'll do we'll do we'll do roundtable shout outs bujo thanks so much for joining the show always a pleasure john richards always good to have you uh, larry can't do the show without you my friend uh my little shout out for the show is a movie called ready player one it is a terrible movie it is also a terrible book but but the first couple of chapters just straight up are very straight up like listen I'm aware that I have been lied to my entire life. This is actually how the universe was created. It was an evolutionary process. And then millions of years later, like it's just a very flat secular telling of how the world came to be up to the point where the VR happens, literally from like the big bang all the way to VR. And I'm like, every kid who watches this movie might pick up the book or, and if they pick up the book, they're at least gonna be injected with that telling and then read the rest of the story afterwards. And I found that to be a really good way to, uh, while it shouldn't be the responsibility of pop culture to do that, but it's a good way to introduce kids in that mindset before religion has all the chains on them and pulls them into a completely different direction. It's good just to have like, right. a very dry- Closes the door and the information flow. Exactly, like here's another idea. It's a, it's a pebble in your shoe and people are gonna lie to you and tell you otherwise, but this is the most scientific way of it. And then it led to VR. And now we have these Easter egg hunts that we're finding. It's like, okay, good, good, good. Uh, John Richards, what do you think? Or uh, what would you like to plug? I'd like to plug Free Thought Channel, mm -hmm. easily found on YouTube. And recently I've taken great delight in debunking Frank Turek. So you can see some of my attempts at that. They're very short on Free Thought Channel. And of course, later today, we will have global atheist news review nice. including ty yeah. and i've just had a message Dread. Dread thinks he can make it today too this nice. is great yeah 
See you later. Boudreau, you also might like that show too. Uh, if you see the link, you're more than welcome to ever come back in, but it's, it's not yeah. a bad, it's not a bad group of guys. I think um, I joined you one time, John. It was fun. Yeah, you maybe did. It's, it's all a blur to me now. Boudreau, what, <laughs> what degree of orange should we uh, check out next week? Yeah, uh, get you some, uh, do, do a, a workout at, at uh, Orange Theory and then right. get you some orange uh, leaf ice cream uh, while okay. listening to some Orange Whip. Orange Whip, nice, nice, nice. I'll yeah. do all three tandems at once. There you go. I did get a message from one of our former members. I won't say who, but uh, it was interesting. Someone who used to be an atheist is now uh, uh, seeing the light of, of God, I guess. And was, Good for was, them. Yeah, I mean, and, and I had a nice exchange with them, and and you know they gave me a question to ponder, and I shot back with another question, and we kept it civil. And it was cool. cool. Nice, mm. nice, nice. Larry Rhodes, anything that you'd recommend we check out? Because oh, I'm looking check for out. books about go atheism <laughs> and what they're all about. But anyway, go ahead, go ahead. Well, do I happen action. to do have have a book on atheism. You don't have to go called, into that. Sound like you're going to talk about something else. Go ahead. Called, go ahead. What's it all about? Anyway, my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Uh, be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and articles on the subject. Uh, you can find me on YouTube by searching for Doubter5. If you have questions for the show, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com. If you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind, you can get help at in recovering from your religious experience at <clears throat> recoveringfromreligion.org. Excuse me. Uh, you can find this show on podcasts everywhere. Just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.